Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you whenever you are hearing this lecture and, and whichever part of this world you are in. Uh, this is the investment analysis and portfolio management uh, lecture series under SWAM lecture and my good name is Raghunandan Sen Gupta from the IMA department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, if you remember in the 8th lecture you were considering uh, the different methodology of trying to draw the efficient frontier and they were actually 5 bullet points. Obviously, you can extend that and have different combinations and have different ideas how you can draw the efficient uh, frontier, but the main idea was basically you can consider a combination of short selling being there, not being there and riskless lending being there, not being there. That means, there are 4 combinations uh, as such which we have discussed in detail in the 8th uh, lecture, while uh, the pending part was basically trying to incorporate other such constraints which can be brought into the model to draw the efficient frontier. So, that is what we are going to discuss and further on some other related topics about uh, portfolio management. So, the basic uh, le lecture title is still continues to be in the area of portfolio theory and portfolio management and the lecture actual descriptions in details would be uh, considering uh, from the first to the last as shown in the slide would be incorporation of other constraints and assumptions as I just mentioned few minutes back. We will also consider Lindner's definition of how it can be incorporated in the sense that if you have short selling in the model how uh, to make it much more practical uh, Lindner's definition can be um, considered in order to consider SS or short selling in more practical way and what is the problem if we do not consider that in the practical sense, I will just mention it very briefly. We will consider the sin single index model which base, uh, would, would be the main uh, work based on which the CAPAM model uh, or capital asset pricing model uh, can be discussed. We will consider the concept of non diversifiable market risk or systematic risk diversifiable risk or non market or non systematic risk. So, uh, by systematic and, and non systematic risk will mean the one which cannot be diversified and which can be diversified. I will come to that later on. We will consider in a very brief that what we mean by market index. In the context we will have the BSE and the NSE and obviously, when we come to that we will discuss the other market index existing in different parts of the financial market in the world in Europe, in US so on and so forth. And to continue this discussion about single index model we will expand that into the multi index model which can also be considered as a precursor to uh, APT uh, concept arbitrage pricing theory. So, as you can see in this slide, uh, we are trying to basically now consider um, um, different constraints, different assumptions being brought into the model when you want to draw the efficient frontier. So, actually we know and which is already written here, so I will just highlight it accordingly. So, if you consider the maximization problem, so the maximization problem was maximization of the, the return, so return based on your investment. And here Ri bars which are the returns for each and every index and bar, bar denotes the sample average that you want to maximize when the returns are multiplied by the weights and weights are basically the decision variables you want to take. In case uh, the weights are between 0 and 1 um, then the sum of the weights should be 1. And you can also model the problem which uh, I would not be discussing, but this is very intuitive. We can also model uh, these as trying to maximize the return based on the fact that you have n number of n i number of stocks in each and every financial assets. So, 
assets being numbered from 1 to small n or capital N. Now, what would be the constraints? The intuitively the constraints would be 1 based on the fact that the risk which is given by double summation w i w j sigma i j, well sigma i j is the covariance matrix w i and w j are the weights corresponding to the ith and the jth asset. That should be less than or equal to sigma square p star, where sigma square p star is a known fixed value of the risk which the decision maker or the investor has considered for himself or herself. And obviously, other remaining cons the constraints which are very logical, if there is no short selling, you will have all the weights between 0 and 1, and obviously, the sum of the weights is equal to 1. In case short selling is there, some of the weights can be negative, but still the idea is true that the sum of the weights is 1. Now, what type of co other constraints, other assumptions can be incorporated? So, I will just consider very simply two of them. The first one which I am now marking in, in red here, the star is basically when we assume that there is dividend d i, small d i from each and every um, investment and we want the, the overall total cumulative dividend for the total portfolio to be greater than equal to capital D star. Here it is written equal to, but we can assume that it is greater than equal to capital D star. D star again is a value of the dividend which the investor wants for himself or herself depending on his or her risk profile. Even though the concept of risk the which is sigma square p star uh, gives a much more um, uh, direct understanding of the concept of risk. But we can also consider this dividend as a form of um, how risky the investment can be for the investor if he wants a dividend to be higher than a certain value, quite high. That means he wants to avoid risk and gain some some returns. Now this mod, this incorporation of the dividend uh, can also be considered in the model when we do the part and which I am now marking in green, which is already marked, but I am just again marking in green. It the model can also be done as trying to minimize the variance of the portfolio, which is minimization of double summation of w i w j sigma i j, where as usual w i and w j are the weights for the ith and the jth one and sigma i j is basically the variance covariance values of this n number of, of uh, stocks. And uh, uh, as, as usual, I will come to one of the important constraints a little bit later on. As usual, the other remaining constraints remain. Some of the weights, which I am just putting a tick mark here, some of the weights is equal to 1. The weights are between 0 and 1. If there is no short selling and if short selling is considered, you can have the weights as negative also. Now, the other constraints, I have not come into the dividend part immediately. Other constraints which can be important for this model which is marked in green where you are trying to minimize the risk can be this part, where you want to ensure that the return of the portfolio which is summation w i into r i bar is greater than or equal to some r bar star p. This r bar star p is basically a fixed value of the return of the portfolio with the investor wants for himself or herself. And uh, the nomenclature of W i R i bar all remain the same, so I am not going to repeat it. And here also you can bring the, the, the constraint which I am the same one, but I am just now marking with green in order to make you understand that this can be done in both the cases when you are trying to consider the maximization of the return or the minimization of the risk. So, if it goes the, into the minimization of the risk. There also you will have again a summation of w i into small d i, d i is basically the dividend being greater than or equal to d star. Again d star is decided by the investor. The next um, uh, constraint which is also very straightforward, intuitive and logical is that why not we remove, so rather than using the red and green color let me use the blue one. Why do not we remove this one which I am just marking in blue? That means, 
the weights are between 0 and 1. It may be possible in both the cases when you are trying to maximize the return or minimization of the risk which is which are shown in red and green color respectively in the slide. We can have that due to some constraint practical constraints or uh, financial constraints or stipulation on the market or as the investor thinks uh, it is, is true for him or her. It may be possible that each of these ith stocks 1 to capital N or small n the weights are always not bounded between 0 1, but they are bounded between a minimum value and the maximum value consider like this. The investor has decided for himself or herself that he cannot he or she cannot invest more than say for example, uh, 70 percent um, uh, of the weight total weight which uh, of the money which he or she has in say for example, uh, Tata Motor stocks or SBI stocks or ONG stocks. It can also be uh, the case that due to some uh, market conditions the investor wants the stock investment for Hindustan Unilever Limited HUL to be at least as high as 20 percent. In that case WI min for the Hindustan liver case will be 0 0.2 while in the case when I was talking about the Tata Motors and other companies where the value of the investment cannot exceed in that case WI max would be 70 percent 0.7. So, in that case also and, and in case if you bring short selling obviously the overall concept who can also be incorporated for some of the stocks if short selling is allowed that the weights can be negative also. But ensuring that in both the models for maximization of the return minimization of the risk the sum always add up to 1. Now, Lindner had um, had a very interesting definition of, of how to incorporate short selling. Now, to go back to, back to the background of short selling, short selling is basically we borrow and invest that particular stock in our portfolio. So, when you are borrowing obviously, it would mean that there is an uh, so called res, uh, resource utilization in the sense my money is being utilized in order to basically go for a short selling mode. But the idea is in case say for example, there is a negative trend in the prices whether it is increase or decreases I am not going to go, go into the, that. If there is a negative trend in the prices it may so happen that I have taken or borrowed some stocks at a value of say for example, 100 and due to some reason the prices have really gone up or down and at the end of the day when I close my position and return that particular set of, of uh, assets. Uh, for from considering they have been uh, short sold, then the amount of loss which I can face an investor can be huge. That means, there is a chance that I may default. In order to overcome uh, come that, Littner has gi had given a very simple way of trying to incorporate that concept of short selling in a mathematical way. So, this is what I am going to discuss. So, let me read the three bullet points and then I will explain as, as, I, as I continue discussing these three bullet points, I will explain um, in details about the concept and I will come back uh, to these uh, type of model formulation and solving at later on. So, at short selling, S S means short selling as, as short selling involved involves putting an amount of money equal to S S for security reason because if I default the other person uh, with whom I have gone into the contract for the short selling would make a loss. So, that means, a security should be required from my part in order to, to ensure that even if there is a default the, the money is there to compensate the other party. So, uh, so, let me continue reading it putting an amount of money equal to S S for security reason thus short selling is like an use of fund rather than a source of fund. That means, the amount of money which I have obviously, I will be utilizing that for, for as a source, but also remember a particular amount of this amount of money which I have. So, some proportion I am utilizing in short selling, other proportion I will use as a collateral as a guarantee such so that in case of, of negative price, price movement with respect to my position, the other party does not make a loss. So, the so, the total fund that the broker, broker means the person is investing, who broker invests in the short plus the fund invested in the long position must, must, must add up to the original value of the investment. So, out of the total amount 
I will be using some in short selling, some as a so called collateral and security. Since under short selling we can have W i is less than 0, it can be negative also. Hence, the proportion of the fund invested in short selling is actually denoted by mod of W i and we would always ensure that the mod of the W i's because W i's can be positive, W i's can be negative also. And in the case when uh, they, you are utilizing the fund for some of them are short, uh, short sold and you are trying to utilize it for the others, the weights can exceed 1. But in order to ensure that considering the mod values of, of this positive and negative values, Lindner mathematically had shown that we can consider mod of, of the weights as 1 and we can continue considering the short selling based on the fact that the total amount is not used for short selling, some amount is used as a guarantee also. Okay. Now, if you remember the when we are discussing the key points to be discussed, we had to discuss about the single index model and so on and so forth. So, we will basically start that pro discussion in a, in a uh, smooth manner here. So, when you are whenever you are trying to basically formulate a uh, portfolio, till now what we have seen is that the rates prices are given, end of the day prices are given, based on this we find out small r or capital R which is uh, return or total return and once these returns are found out, average of them are found out from the sample which you are picking up, our main task is to find out W i which are the weights or if I consider the um, uh, in a more in, in depth manner it is basically to cal find out the number of stocks I will, I will buy or sell in a particular asset which is N i. But the idea is that of the uh, re related to that we need to find out the the way of methodology of calculating the returns. So, based on the returns are found out then only we can utilize those return values R i bars and use that for the calculation of the of the weights or in the optimization model in order to draw the efficient frontier in the best possible manner such so that they give us an idea of how the efficient frontier looks like. So, the two, two important point about which we should be concerned while implementing the portfolio theory are simplification of the amount of data and the type of input data need is needed to perform the portfolio and as analysis very easily. Because in the initial time now obviously, you have huge computing power in a, even if a laptop and definitely in a desktop, but the, in the initial days when you have to basically do a lot of calculations they are uh, trying to have a lot of data may take time in order to solve the problem. So, you need to basically optimize on the data utilization that means, make them as simple as possible and try to basically take as few as data possible, not you are not reducing the problem, you are trying to basically take few sets of data only to do your calculations correctly uh, nicely. So, that was basically the initial emphasis. Nowadays as I said few minutes back that does not hold true due to the computing power. So, this computing power concept is mentioned in the second bullet point simplification, simplification of the computational procedure is needed to calculate the optimum portfolio in the shortest possible time and the in the easiest way. So, we will basically concentrate on these two bullet points and basically do our discussions accordingly. To solve these above mentioned problems which we just discussed like have the data simplify it to the maximum possible extent and do the calculations and completion in the easiest methodology. We basically concentrate there are other methods also we will try to concentrate on two key factors and the ideas are under the single index model which I am just now underlying in blue. Under that you have the, sing, the index model, you have the uh, index models as I mentioned which I am again highlighting, you have the single index model which I said was basically the idea based on which you had the CAPAM, capital asset pricing model. And the second um, uh, sub point under index model which I am putting a double tick mark in blue is basically the multi index model which was basically the background based on which we can discuss the arbitrage pricing theory. 
apart from its index models single and multi index what are the other methodologies we will consider that we will consider here is the averaging techniques and the averaging techniques also would be done in such a way that as we have considered for the index model so also we will consider for the averaging technique the main bullet points was data reduction in a very simple way and computational efficiency in the simplest possible manner. Now as the word single index model is which we will discuss now is what does it mean. So single index model means there must be one index based on we, which we need to find out how the returns of the stocks are. So the question which will immediately come from your side is that can we find out a single index which will basically mimic and give us about the movement of the returns of each and every stock is it possible the answer is yes. Under this method the most important assumption <coughs> which we are we will consider is that the co movement I will highlight it in, in yellow the co movement between stocks stocks means scripts i and j that means considering i and j is from 1 to n co movement between stocks is due to a single common influence which is affecting each and every index and this index we will see later is called the market index that is basically it is the average characteristics of the market which we will consider <coughs> as this as the index which and which will have influence and the effect movement of, of the, um, uh, the prices of each and every stock would be dependent on that such that the movement co movement which is happening between the stocks is basically dependent on the single index only. These models are not only used to estimate the correlation matrix, correlation matrix is based on which we find out the risk return of these uh, assets, but it will also be used to find out the efficient market test <coughs> in, in order to conduct the equilibrium test when we want to find out that what is the best price. So our main concent concentration as you can understand from the slide and the, the points which I have highlighted is basically to find out an index which we will call the market index such that it will subsume under itself all the co movement between the stocks such that if you are able to find out the movement or the relationship between that index and that particular stock our job is done. That means only one index and, the and its relationship with each and every stock it will give us all the set of information rather than trying to find out the movement between each and every individual stocks which you have. So, if you have say for example n number of, of index, so you need to find out the movement between each and every stock. So, you I will take a combination of n c 2 and obviously that will give me the overall um, the relationship which is happening between n number of index uh, n number of stocks which are there. So, rather than that in the single index what we do is that we do not consider the relationship between each and every stock which is there, we only concentrate the, uh, the relationship be between all these n number of stocks with a single point which is the single uh, index or the market index and obviously in that case the so called number of calculation is only n in number. Now how does the single index model look like? Now before I discuss this let us uh, step back to all the concept which we have studied in simple uh, geometry in trigonometry was basically the concept of a straight line. Now, if you remember this concept of, of a straight line I will use the red color here was basically given by y is equal to m x plus c. So, here what I need to find out is basically the relationship between y and x, x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable and m is basically the slope and c is the intercept. So, if I draw the, the line straight line I will use red color both for the x axis and y axis this is x and this is y and if I fit see for example line would be this. So, this tan of theta 
this theta and the other theta which we had considered in the 8th the lecture the concept remains the same is tan of that. So, this tan of theta is basically m is equal to m the slope and this basically uh, the coordinate at which it cuts the y axis is basically c. So, we are uh, all aware of this this um, equation y is equal to m x plus c. Now, what we are going to discuss is exactly on the similar lines. So, if you if you know y is equal to m x plus c how it looks like the concept which you are going to discuss would become very simple, but there would be one subtle difference I am going to come to that later on. So, consider the equation which is there which is the single index model and why it is written like that I will use the green color to highlight. So, the equation is r i is equal to alpha i suffix i plus beta i into r m plus epsilon. So, if you look at this equation is exactly what it means. So, r i is something like y this is equal to basically something like c and alpha is equal to c beta is basically is equal to something like m and uh, rm is basically something to do with x and obviously you will see there is an epsilon epsilon is basically the the white noise which is there because here returns are based on the stock prices stock prices are random hence you will basically have a, a particular distribution for that now if i am able to draw this line and considering this the, the if i go to the concept of simple uh, regression models in statistics. Let me draw that line, and, but now I am going to use the green color in order to differentiate the y is equal to m x plus c and this equation which I have just highlighted. So, this is the so called x axis. Now, in the place of x axis, basically you will have r m, and in place of y, you will basically have r i these are the axes and the points are random. So, first the let me draw the points based on the readings I take for any particular stock. So, as I changes you will have different such diagrams. So, consider the best fit line is something like this and in this case beta is basically as you can see would be the slope. And when I mean the, the error for each and every reading, technically I will be considering the errors like this. So, basically if I consider this as the first reading, this will be epsilon 1 for the first reading. If I consider this as the second reading, this was epsilon 2 considering there are uh, 20 number of readings you will have such 20 epsilon. So, our main task if you remember if we all of you must have done simple statistics in linear regression model was basically to uh, find out the sum of the squares of the errors and minimize that. And if you remember conceptually minimizing the error was akin to the concept that you are trying to basically minimize the dispersion of the variance and minimizing the errors square of the errors gave us the estimate of this these values which are alpha and beta. I am not going to come to that immediately the theoretical concept, but basically that was the idea how you do that. Now, let us bring this concept back into the discussion of the single index model which I am again highlighting in green. Now, what are the assumptions? They would be assumptions for this model and these assumptions are exactly the same what we see in linear regression model. If you remember in the linear regression model we do consider the, the concept that uh, the there is no dependent structure between x and, and the error that we will consider later on. We will consider the distribution of y and x are I am talking very simply I am not going to the actual statistics we will consider the normality of distribution for x and y we will also consider the er and the errors has a variance and the variance of the errors would be fixed and so on and so forth. So, all those things are, are there and also we will consider the errors to have a normal distribution with a mean value of 0 
and a standard deviation or, a, or the variance of sigma square ep, uh, suffix epsilon. So, there are definitely 6 to 7 of these assumptions. So, I just highlighted the important point and what I mentioned I will try to basically come into the discussion with each and every so called bullet points which are written out here. The first one, it mentions the error has an, uh, has an expected value of 0 which is right because if you, if you remember in general linear regression model not multiple linear regression model would be the case when you have more than one x. In, in linear regression model the, the simplest of the assumption for the error would be a normal distribution with 0 mean and 1 standard deviation or variance. So, the first part which you have is exactly what is mentioned here the, the expected value of the errors are 0. Now, if I am able to draw it see for example, so I will use the green color here continuing it or let me use a different color. So, in order to differentiate the people who are viewing this and this uh, video. So, I will use the blue color, but here I am not drawing x and y I am basically trying to understand the errors. So, if I, I mark the errors here. So, errors can be positive and negative errors are basically the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So, if you see in, in this green uh, curve which I am not going to mark this has already been drawn. So, the, the this epsilon 1 epsilon 2 are basically the differences in the, the predicted and the actual value. So, the actual value was basically related to y and predicted value was that same y, but y hat corresponding to the predicted value of the forecasted value. Now, if I draw the errors and if I try to draw a continuous um, so called um, uh, curve for the errors even though that may not be true, but I am trying to basically depict it the error would look like this. And, and these are the errors, so I am measuring the errors along the time and if you concentrate here I have tried my level best to draw if you see the average value of this fluctuation of the errors is along this x axis which is basically the value of 0. So, this is basically given here in the first bullet point that the error have a expected value which is 0. The second one is which I am now marking again with green because I am using this green one I am marking with a double tick it means the covariance existing between the error and x because rm is basically the x or the market the covariance existing between the market and the error will consider as, as 0. And if you remember in the linear, linear regression model we did consider the covariance existing between x and the error was 0. So, this is the one that means there is no dependent structure existing between the errors and the market. So, error would be white noise which is independent of the market movement it is being affected externally. The third bullet point which I am marking with a triple tick here it means uh, the concept of the covariances or, or the dependent structure between the errors are 0 that means we will consider the concept that the, the dispersion of the of the errors sigma square suffix epsilon continues to be fixed it does not change. Now, that I am going to highlight is using the blue curve which is there let me change the color of this, this stylus. Now, what it actually means considering its normal distribution what it actually would mean is I think I should use the dark one sorry sorry for that I should use uh, and I am able to draw if it is a normal distribution it would mean that the variance if which I take at any point of time that remains fixed that means the variance is not increasing. So, if I if you are able to um, check these three slices on the normal distribution at three different points normality holds that means the variance mean value is already fixed and variance is also also fixed that is basically related to the third bullet point. The fourth bullet point is 
that the variance of the of the errors is fixed sigma square suffix epsilon which means the value so actually this is what is there i have considered initially one which is the simplest case it will be in in in, uh, in actually actuality it can be sigma square so if i consider in the diagram blue one which i have drawn let me use the blue stylus here this means there is an variance which is fixed here and the variance is basically for all these three curves at three different points is sigma square epsilon i i means for the ith stock obviously I, as i change i the stock number changes finally the variance of the market is sigma square m which is fixed it is not changing so this is basically the fifth bullet point so i put five tick marks here the fourth one was variance was sigma square so i should basically put, put four tick marks here so actually this would be the ideas and whatever i did mention when we are, when i was drawing the regression model in this uh, green uh, diagram exactly those concept which are there in statistics are taken here accordingly now how does this model help so i have given a lot of theoretical conceptual idea of the single tennis model try to bring uh, some uh, information from linear regression model some information is from is equal to y is equal to mx plus c and all these things but we have to utilize that so how do we utilize now if you go back to this slide which is 10th one here you can see now actually the equation of r i is equal to alpha i plus beta i into r m plus epsilon actually need to find out its average value in the long run and based on that we need to utilize that what do we mean in the average so the equation which you see here and the dots or the points which you see here again i am just putting the dots here these are the variable values for different values of of uh, for for a fixed value of i for at different point of times but rather than using that you want to find out the best fit line so the best fit line is again i am highlighting is this one and that we need to find out from this equation and that is what we will do in the next slide which is the 11th one. Now if you remember I will change the color to red. So if you remember the equation was R i is equal to alpha i plus beta i into R m plus epsilon. So let us i sorry. So let us take the expected value if I take the expected value here so it is expected value of r i is equal to this expected value i am putting in that everything inside the black end alpha i plus beta i plus r into r m plus epsilon i so if i so this becomes r i bar because the average value is equal to alpha i is technically a constant even though for different sample sets alpha i would change but we will consider as a constant so it is alpha i plus beta i is a constant because there is a slope for the fixed line the slope is not changing it will be r bar m because we are taking the average value plus this value is 0 because we have already assumed the expected value of the error is 0. So if I concentrate on this equation this is exactly what we get and if you if you now further concentrate this is exactly looks like that equation y is equal to m x plus c where now the error term is not there because I have taken the average value. So if I need to fit the line this is actually the line and I have r m value here and these values are r i values and technically this is 
alpha i am not putting any suffix so it is i would basically i bring it back it here so it will be alpha and rm remains because that's the market and actually this curve is basically the value is is tan of this is equal to beta i now having said that i need to find out the i found out the expected value and i need to find out the the variance also so let me use a different color let it be green now again i go back to the equation which i am now marking in green r i is equal to alpha i plus beta i into r m plus epsilon so if i take the variance let, let me write it variance of r i is equal to variance of alpha plus beta i r m plus epsilon i now if you consider the left hand side so this would would be it be sigma square i which is the variance of the i th stock and variance of the return of the i th stock remember not the variance of the of the stock price is the, for the returns and when i mean in the return i am always considering i am writing it separately let me write in in, in black one so this is basically i am considering returns as r i i could have also considered small r also so depending on that if it is capital r the standard deviation would be based on the capital r values if it is small r the standard deviation would be based on the small r values so let us not get confused about that so as i am using always capital r i will continue considering that okay now coming back to this part so the left hand side is variance and what is there on the right hand side now there are three terms so th if there are three terms they will be in, in the in a three square three cross three matrix the principal diagonal would be would be the variance variance of what what the one comma one element would be the variance of alpha i which is zero because it's the deterministic value second value is basically the variance of beta i into rm beta i, uh, I is fixed so it will become a square so beta i square into the variance of rm or return from the market and the third term is basically the variance of of the error which we have assumed as sigma square suffix epsilon and what happens to the of the diagonal element now of the diagonal element they would be in a 3 cross 3 9 the the principal diagonal 3 are already taken out so technically now we need to consider the other rest 6 so let me you use a different color to denote what happens to the other element i'll take a small uh, area on the right hand side here 1 comma 1 element is here 2 comma 2 element is here here means we'll donate it 3 comma 3 element is there now what happens to these two values because they are a mirror image of each other now if you consider alpha it is a deterministic value hence the covariance existing between alpha and beta i r m or alpha and epsilon are all zero so these values which i have just marked they become zero because alpha is a deterministic value now let me come to the other two values which is basically the covariance existing between beta i r m and epsilon now there was an assumption if you remember we have considered that the covariance existing between the market and the error is zero so in so technically we also in, ensure all the off diagonal elements are zero only the principal diagonal remains and that is what we are going to draw or mark i won't say draw in the mark means so you will have the variance which is beta i square because it's square because you are taking the variance sigma square suffix m because that's the market plus sigma square epsilon and all other elements vanish so if i consider this equation 
is exactly what we have considered here. And if I take the, so this was basically the, the variance of the i th stock and if I take the covariance of the i th stock with the j th co covariance existing between the i th and the j th, then obviously I have to take the covariance based on this concept and that it can be easily proved because we have done the first two. So, obviously, the third one would be very easy to understand. So, let me use a different color, say for example, violet. So, this third bullet point can also be found out where sigma i j which is the covariance existing with the i th and the j th one is equal to beta i into beta j into sigma square m. Now, here is what we have been talking about trying to find out the relationship or co movement of each and every stock with the market and that being the only deciding factor is the assumption. Here it is. If you consider sigma i j, sigma i j is basically the covariance existing. So, rather than that we only replace that with beta i into beta j into sigma square m. Sigma square m once found out is fixed for the sample and once you have found out beta i, beta j you just multiply them and the level of calculations amount of calculations is reduced drastically. So, that was one of the important point why we considered the single index model later on we will consider this multi index model and also the averaging technique. So, let us consider a theoretical very simple example. So, we consider that alpha is equal to 3 alpha i or alpha is equal to 3. We will consider beta is equal to 2 which is the, the tan of that angle and we have month wise it can be day wise, second, weeks, hours whatever we have 1 to 5 days, 5 readings returns are given for the ith one considering and not talking about the units it is 14, 10, 25, 16, 4 it can be in percentage. You have the return on the market given that is the market index is 5, 4, 10, 7, 1 corresponding to the values which are given in the second column and here on the right hand side we basically find out the, the values based on the, the um, uh, return of, of this values which we, we want to find out which is basically beta i into r m. So, beta i r m is because y if you remember in the formula it, it was r i bar is equal to alpha i plus beta i into r m and epsilon is not there actually in the average values, but if you consider the average value not being there. So, now see here the bar is not there. So, the second one led to the first one when we take the average values. So, if we consider that epsilon i's would be coming out. So, we just replace that. So, the returns are given that means r i's are given here. The returns r m are given here. The beta value is given 2, the alpha value is given 3. So, beta is utilized here in this formula, beta is utilized in this formula and based on that immediately we put, we find out the errors to be this. Even though they are, they are, are theoretical, but what is important to note or this. So, if I draw the errors, if you remember the curve which I have drawn that was continuous, actually with time period if I draw the errors, the first error is plus 1, so I am just drawing histograms, second one is minus 1, third one is plus 2, second one is min and the, and the fourth one is minus 2 and the fifth one is minus 2. So, if I add up actually the error would be in average between 0. So, if I have drawn the continuous one which I, I mean again drawing it, so it will be a continuous curve. So, this is basically the error which would have been there. Now, let us expand the discussion that ok fine we have considered r i for each and every stock and how the market index gives us the information of the return for each and every stock, but now we need to combine this formula to find out that of a portfolio. 
If you go back to the concept of the portfolio, what it is? We have 100 rupees or some amount of um, uh, money and we want to basically apportion it in some proportion starting from W1 to Wn. Now, we need to incorporate that those values in of W1 and Wn correspondingly with the returns and the standard deviations to find out the returns of the portfolio and the return and variance of the portfolio. Now, we are expanding not concentrating on the average return of the stock, variance of the stock, but the overall return of the portfolio and the overall variance of the portfolio. So, now we already have, let me change the color. So, we already have Ri from the formula Ri bar, we already have sigma square i, we already have sigma square m, we already have R bar m, we already have alpha i, we already have C horizontal beta i for the i stock. Now, the important concept as I mentioned, we bring W i which are the weights and obviously remaining remembering the weights add up to 1. Now, I bring it here. So, now if I consider the, the portfolio which is now R p, R p is actually basically the portfolio. So, I would basically be combining it as W 1 consider there are n. So, W 1 into R 1 plus dot dot till W n into R n. So, if I expand in the formula and I find out the average values, average value why I am doing because I want to exclude the epsilons to be considered because it will make our, our uh, deduction very cluttered. So, W 1 into the formula which we already have. So, the first one will be alpha 1 plus beta 1 into R m plus dot dot till the last one W n alpha n plus beta n into R m. Combine them. Let us. So, let us take them one by one and let me highlight using the blue one for the first one. So, I take W 1 into alpha 1, there is W 2 into alpha 2 till the last one W into alpha n. So, if I combine all of them, it becomes summation of W i alpha i, i is equal to 1 to n and this is already there. In the second one, let me use a different color, see for example, orange. So, if I concentrate the other one W 1 beta 1 R m till W n beta n R m. So, this sorry. So, yeah, yeah W n beta n R n. If I con concentrate on that, it becomes W i beta i R m i is equal to 1 to n and this is already considered. So, I have been able to combine the returns found out individually from the formula to find out the return of the portfolio done. That is the return part is done. Now, I want to com uh, combine to find out the variance. The variance formula we already know before coming to the variance. Let me uh, highlight other two points which are easy. So, easier one I will come and come back to the the detailed calculation of the variance of the uh, of the portfolio. So, two important points are I consider this as alpha p which is here and I consider this as beta p which is here. So, the first idea done, third idea done, fourth idea done. Now, let us concentrate on the sigma square p values which is the portfolio's variance. Now, if you consider the portfolio variance, let me go back to the original formula. Let me use 
the color as say for example, light blue, we know sigma square i is equal to basically the, the variance of the asset is equal to beta i square sigma square m plus sigma square epsilon. Now, I need to combine them and also remember we have done that sigma i j is equal to beta i beta j sigma square m. So, these are already used if you go back this is sigma i j is equal to beta i beta j into sigma square m and sigma square is equal to beta i square into sigma square m plus sigma square epsilon. So, these are the principal diagonal values of the variance and the off diagonal, diagonal element are given by the covariances. So, there are weights w 1 to w n we combine them. So, when we combine them actually for combination. So, sigma i j would be co corresponding to the fact that I am considering the weights as w 1 into w j. So, if I and they would be basically be all the off diagonal elements. So, that the number is if I, if you remember it is n into n minus the principal diagonal. So, these are the off diagonal elements if you combine them that becomes this formula. It is double summation w i w j beta i beta i beta i beta j into sigma square m. So, multiplying the corresponding weights of the i th and the j th one that will give me the of the diagonal elements. Now, I need to concentrate on the the diagonal elements. Diagonal elements have, have would have two paths one is the risk coming from the market and one is the risk coming from the white noise which is uh, random. So, these are the terms. So, so, from the market is this part sig beta square sigma square I am sorry it is cluttered, but I am trying to explain it as far as possible in details. So, it will be beta square suffix i into sigma square m is corresponding the market and the other part due to the error is sigma square epsilon suffix epsilon. If I have the weights, so obviously now the weights they are the principal diagonal they would be squared. So, w 1 square w 2 square so on and so forth. So, if I cons concentrate these terms are here which is w 1 square into beta 1 square sigma square suffix m plus w 2 square sigma 2 square, beta 2 square sigma square suffix m so on and so forth till the nth term and the other term is basically corresponding to the values which I have for the the this the values for the uh, weights. So, when I find out the weights I basically multiply them and find out the weights accordingly which is I can sum them up for 1 to n. So, now when I put in the formula after considering for the portfolio. So, this is the return of the portfolio corresponding the fact that alpha p is basically the so called coordinate where it cuts the y x, y x is as r p here now is alpha p and beta p is basically the, the tan and, and beta p would have basically a very specific name we will come to that later multiplied by average value of the market. Thus, if the portfolio P is taken to be the market portfolio, market means which I will come later on um, in the next class is about the BAC or the NSE. Thus, if the portfolio P is taken to be the market portfolio, all the stocks held in the same proportions in this in the proportions depending on the, the market which is there. Then as, as it is in RM, then the expected return of P must be RM because we are considering the proportions to be same w 1, w 2, w n and all the stocks like in the BSC or the NSC 30 or 50 we consider them in the same proportions as they are in the market then actually the portfolio which you are trying to mimic for the market would be as it is. So, it will mimic the market 
to the maximum possible extent because it will be a small set of assets taken from the the market index and it will follow the market exactly i'll come into the uh, detailed discussion when we go into the um, multi index model and other part later on so with this i'll close this ninth class have a nice day and thank you very much